Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over this rather large NHL slate for this evening. It's a rather small NBA slate, so I do want to put a little bit of time into this. And this might go in a couple of different directions, depending on, again, uh, which, directions the, which direction it goes. Um, but I want to go in depth a little more into the projections and make a couple of observations and and what we're going to do again we're going to go sort of from the bottom up so you know we're going to talk about the projections then we're going to talk about what they look like when they're adjusted and aggregated then we're going to build lineups based on those projections but you know throwing in our knowledge of how uh, lineups are supposed to correlate and all that stuff and then at the very end we will put all that stuff into sabersim and build lineups using, you know, it's it's uh, it's algorithms, which does obviously a better job than I would of creating high upside lineups. Um, so it's an enormous slate, and and, and this is what I want to uh, I want to observe something. Um, I want to show a couple of different sites, um, and I don't think they're going to have a problem with this. Whatever. I'm, paying for it or whatever. Actually, that's not even true. Some of these are free. So I want to show you some of the differences between where these kind of implied team totals look like that all the projections are kind of derived from. So we'll first take a look at Sabersim. Um, and and we'll, we'll, I don't really compare them without going one at a time. So I, we'll have to do it this way. You'll see that you have Florida at 4.5. And then they're really the only one above, and then there's Toronto above four, four point two, and then after that you have a three and a half with San Jose, a three point six out of Colorado, three point six out of Edmonton, maybe three point three, a little bit worse over there, maybe three and a half out of the Devils, and a three and a half over Boston. But you see, you have Florida with this implied team total of four and a half, and then there's Toronto, and these are really the only two above four. Now I want to compare that to some other places. So this is this is Daily Roto, who is basically free for now. Um, uh, I've I've used them back when they were paying, but every once in a while I use them as well. And if you look at them, it's like a little different, right? So their implied team total, you're going to get San Jose with just a flat four. San Jose is up to a four. Edmonton's a four. Winnipeg's a full half point higher than Sabersim, almost at a four. Carolina almost a four, Florida is a four, Toronto is a four, and the Devils are a four, and the Kings are a four. So you'll have Daily Roto, which is a, has a much closer spread between all of these all of these team totals, and it's interesting, you know, just to see, especially with hockey, where there's not that much room. I don't say that much. That much room. You're only talking about four or five to have. I guess this big of a discrepancy between projection models when you're dealing with, with, with team totals. And then here's another one I want to throw in there, give them free publicity. Um, one of the guys, uh, th th these play people have been around for forever. They haven't really done a lot with DFS, but they started this year a little bit, uh, a little bit more at this daily faceoff site. I think Adam turned me on to this originally. I don't feel particularly comfortable trusting them, you know, with projections yet. They haven't back tested them enough. But but here you look at their free, this is like their free page, and they list their implied team totals. They have the the, the Maple Leafs like standing above at 4.3, you know, uh, and then you have the Panthers like well below them and then a big drop to everybody else. So it, it's, it's interesting how people can and how sites can take the same, I guess, raw data and come up with very different uh, team totals now. We want to compare those to the actual uh, money lines. Um, this is actually the DraftKings Sportsbook. And this actually doesn't break it down by individual team totals. No, it might. Let's just see. If I put, just pick Florida. Um, what about their totals? Team totals. Um I guess it doesn't exactly work that way. So it says like over unders, like they don't have a projection, right? Um, so it's hard to say where where actually Vegas is coming in. I mean, you could do it, you know, but it's it's not exactly as revealing as I thought it might be. 
So the point I want to make, though, is that you have one, and I'm sure Roto Grinders, if I pulled them up, would be probably a totally different look. But I was expecting everybody to be much closer with respect to the team totals. Um, so that's that's kind of observation number one. But then what's kind of interesting <laughs> um, is when I actually do the work on the actual projections, here's like the raw data before I put everything and I, I tweak stuff a little bit. You'll see that the actual projections are not that much different. You know, even though you have, you know, models making very kind of different assumptions about team totals, I think um, in the end, the actual projections are very, very close. Um, I don't know exactly what that means, but it's definitely something to note. Um, I think the idea is that, actually, I don't know what the idea is, but 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 I think but but the, the conclusion is that the projections themselves are not nearly going to be as important as as lot of construction and hockey, just because of the way um, correlation works and things like that. Um, so I think it's more important is to, again, know which line correlates well with one another, um, which uh, goalies correlate better with their defenses and things like that. Okay. I don't know if that was interesting at all to anybody and maybe someone else has a better conclusion than I have about that, but it was an observation that I made. So now we're going to move up the list. Now is where I kind of break it all down. I take all the projections. I screw around with them. I tweak I this, 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 and this is the overall projection model that I come up with to kind of, you know, this is what I'll input into Saber Sim, but maybe not right now because we still have a lot to change between now and, and lock, but Whatever it is, uh, this is what I would put in here. And when you analyze it, again, I do forgive me if you've been through this video a bunch of times, but this is, you know, this is what we do, is we just visualize what these guys look like when vank when banked, when ranked by sheets value score, which is again uh, uh, a metric which combines both upside and points per dollar and salary and things like that. And the first thing that you'll notice is that. Austin Matthews is way above the rest. And this doesn't happen all that often, especially with the high price guys. So when you're when you're thinking about who to who to hand build, it's a it's a pretty good good idea to start with something like Matthews, Nylander, Marner. These are three guys that are in the top 10 or top 11. And when you look at the lines, well, while they are not all on the same even strength line. They are on the same power play line. So I think you could put all three of those together and be kind of off to uh, obviously a very, very good start. And then you'll see just kind of lurking at the bottom here, not the bottom because there's still a million players below him, but you have Tavares also from Toronto, who is even strength line two, correlating very well with, um, with uh, who's it, Nylander? Uh, Marner. But also he's on the power play line. So this is a full, awesome power play stack that is really standing out as uh, a really, really strong play. Now, again, we don't care about ownership for the purposes of this. And I imagine these guys are going to be owned. But in an enormous slate, um, you know, how much can these guys really be owned? And the other thing is that as I went over, depending on where you look, there's the, there, the implied team totals there for a lot of teams are, are competitive. So I think that the, the ownership is not going to be that big of a deal on pretty much anybody, but we'll see. So that's where I would start. I would start with a, with a Toronto stack. So why don't we put that in, into a, uh, into a DFS lane. We'll, we'll see what we can get. You know, we'll see what, what it looks like. Okay. Big, big slate tonight. I thought they were going to make a huge uh, prize pool again, but they didn't. Um, all right, so Austin Matthews, we'll put him in. We'll do the full thing. We'll do Tavares. Then we will do Marner, Nylander, and those are the four. Those are the four. We won't put the defense in yet. Um, we'll just kind of leave it like this. Now you'll see that, you know, this is pretty expensive, so you're going to have to really make the rest of this work. And maybe, just maybe, it is just too expensive to play all these guys. And before we even go on to the other stacks, again, what I'd like to do just to kind of see – is I'd like to pick the goalie that's 
viable that's the cheapest okay and unfortunately i mean you got to go all the way down to 7800 hella buck um who's so at 7500 I and mean, it's almost like it's almost like goalies in freaking soccer you just you, you don't really even care who you play a goalie because if the guy's cheap they're probably playing a good team that you're going to get a lot of shots from which is also good um but just just to put the most pressure on ourselves let's put probovsky in He's been really bad, though. Again, I shouldn't be saying it that way, but let's do it. If, if we put Bobrovsky in, which we probably wouldn't do, let's do it anyway. Then we're stuck, right? We only have 3,000 a man, so now we're really, really punting. So it's possible that this Toronto thing is just way too expensive, you know, to work. Now, before I even go on, let me just, let me just see if there are kind of one-offs that are really cheap that can make this work okay so you do have this com this comfort who is 3600 who's showing up as a really good sheets value score and you don't get this too often um so he's somebody that that might show up might be a really really good one-off in general so if i again just just to just for fun if i put him in to colorado i'll throw up over here and now you're still at 2,800, man. This is going to be very, very difficult to do. Okay. So um, now, again, let's just say that, again, and I'm just trying to force this. Let's go all the way down to, say, Mrazek. Makes sense. Now you could probably do it at 3,300 a, a man. But, I mean, just playing 3,300-hour guys for the sake of it, just to get to Toronto, I don't think is the right idea on a big slate like this, right? Um, because there's just other good options and to kind of like strain to get these in. Okay, so you could play Teravainen at 3,600. And then you're really punting at defense twice. It just seems as though Toronto is just going to be too expensive to make work today. Um, okay. Let's look at the next uh, next option. So, can we're just kind of eyeballing this here, and I see Florida as the next one because you see, uh, well, forget Bobrovsky for a second. You have Kachuk, Barkov, and Reinhardt all in the top ten, and then you can go down to Ekblad as well. Um, when I say go down, I don't mean in price because he's expensive, but you know you go down to the value rankings. So let's just take a look at, the, at where they correlate. So Kachuk is two one. Barkov is 1-1, one, one. Reinhardt is 1-1, one, one. and Ekblad is 1-1. One, one. Okay, so these guys correlate well enough. So let's put these guys in and see what that looks like. Let's keep Comfort in there just in case we might need them. Um, Florida. Barkov, was it Bennett? No, it was Reinhardt, right? There was Kachuk. Oh, my God, all these are really expensive. These are expensive stacks today. Barkov, Pichuk, Reinhardt. Who did I say? Ekblad was the next one. Okay. I mean, you can do this. Once again, you're at 3,700 a man. Um, what would be nice is maybe to, if there was another guy from Florida just for the purposes of filling out the stack that was kind of cheap. Let's take a look. Hoping that we can find another flock. Yeah, okay. So, no, not really. Montour, 6,600. Yeah, so it's it's going to be rough, you know, but at, le at least we have a shot with the Florida guys. Let's, 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 let's continue on. Let's do, let's do a couple of others. We're going to keep Comfer in here, by the way. We're, we're going to need him. And we're going to keep this, this Teravanian guy in the mix because I have a feeling we're going to need – I have a feeling we're going to need a cheapo there as well. All right, let's go back to our, to our sheet. I wonder what the Saberson builds are going to look like because this, this is a pretty – these are tight. Um, all right, so now you have um, Ovechkin and Kane 
Uh, any of these guys show up? No, no other Washingtons and no other Chicagos. Let's look at Timo Meyer, Mayer. Okay, so you have Hurdle and Mayer, but then no one else up here. Then you have Boston's. You have Pasternak and Ulmark, but those two are going to be really expensive as well. So this is going to be very, very difficult to build today. Um, and you're looking at Nashville. I mean, the top guy is 8,100, the defenseman. So on a slate like this, I'm probably going to rely on Saberson to come up with some stuff for me because these are tough builds. I mean, you look, you go down to Edmonton, who I like to play. I mean, these, they're not even rated that high. So I wonder what – so I probably just go back to this idea of playing the Floridas and then just punting the rest of these positions. Actually, Gomfer is a center, right? So if we played Gomfer – where do you go? Oh, Gomfer is it? Let's see. Now it's thirty-eight fifty a man, even paying down at defense at, at guard at guard at a goalie. I mean, you could do it. You could do it, um, and that's probably what I would end up doing in my hand builds is starting is playing Florida, and then um, and then trying to make that work. Boy, boy, this is a really really tough uh, tough slate. All right, so let's go to Saber Sim. And this is a probably a really good saber sim slate because you can't build anything on your own. <laughs> it's like yeah. so. Let's 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 upload the projections as they are now, at least. Throw them in. Um, we'll build it at twenty max builds, I suppose, because you don't even really need to go for max whatever. I just want lineups that work. So let's uh. Let's build 20. Let's just see. And then we'll extend it. We'll extend it to say 50 or something like that. Because we're building actually 500. It's just showing us the top 50, the top 20. I wonder what we're going to get. I, I imagine one of those two teams plus the punts, but sometimes you get like these, these, these secondary lines in there. Yeah, I figure this might be the case. So, you know, I should have known, right? Because we kept going back to this Colorado guy this comfort and i'm like you know why don't you just stack that guy with the other colorados and i guess that's the one that's going to make the most sense so yeah so so that's what you're getting is the comfort with the colorado guys and boy i should have thought of that that's uh very interesting so let's do 50 lineup see if it makes a difference yeah same thing so oh, as a matter of fact i mean colorado is getting off the full treatment at like 45 percent ownership um, in my, in my you know, building 50. So yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, and then the others, I, I'm getting the two stacks that I tried to build, like Florida's and Toronto's, but I'm just curious what types of, I'm getting four of threes, four twos, some sixes, some of the, I'm getting rid of the four zeros and stuff like that um, through this, through just eliminating them here. But I'm curious to see what the Toronto's look like. Toronto's. Yep. Uh, whoa, this actually dropped to Engwall here. Yeah, you're not getting anything pure. Okay, this is this one's decent. And then again, you're punting. Oh no, this this actually has Matthews. This actually gives you a five man, actually a six man Toronto stack, which actually makes sense. I actually like this one a lot, actually. And then we hopefully get lucky here. You could actually don't need to do this. You could go back to your comfort guy if you want, you know? And then here you get, here you get the Colorado with the Toronto. That certainly makes some sense. Yeah, this is pretty pure. Except it's not exactly what you want, right, from Toronto, because you're getting Matthews at 1-1, Engel at 3-2, and Sandine at 2-1. That's not exactly... Not even almost what you want. I mean, but this one is is, is kind of what you want. Three Torontos. Ooh, and this is interesting. A couple of of, uh, of Arizonas. Oh, that's pretty cool. So that's why I kind of like doing this. I, I get some good ideas. 
from this, these Saberson builds of what you can do and what you can't. Again, this is this is early in the day, but um, I'm going to do a little work on this slate. I think I'm I think I'm going to play this. Um, I'm definitely going to play it, but I'm going to put a lot of care into this one because I think this is kind of fun. Okay, uh, I guess that will do it. I uh, hope this was not too uh, arcane, um, and you did actually get some plays from this. But again, it's you know teach man to fish and all that stuff. You know, so hopefully the the you know, the the process was more important, and you learned something from that as well. Uh, good luck, everybody.